specialized crime investigation with simulation on interrogation and interview. This course provides emphasis on the constitutional rights of persons arrested, placed under investigation, search and seizure. It takes on the conduct of interview and interrogation of suspects, person of interest, and witness, and simulates on the different crimes against person, economic crimes, and other special laws on transnational and organized crimes. The Evidence required and report writing. So our first topic is on uh, arrest. Arrest is defined as the taking of person into custody in order that he may be bound to answer for the commission of an offense. An arrest may be made at any day or any time of the day. Under Section 1, Rule 113 of the rules of criminal procedure, there are two types of arrests. Arrests with a warrant and a warrantless arrest. An arrest with warrant proposes that an affidavit complaint was filed against the suspect or the respondent with the office of the prosecutor or in certain exceptional cases with the Department of Justice and it finds probable cause to charge him in court. The court separately finds probable cause for the issuance of a warrant of arrest against him. A person arrested with a warrant is placed under the jurisdiction of the court that issues it and will have to be arraigned and subjected to pre-trial within 10 days from receipt of the case. The intention of this particular rule is to bring the arrestee or the accused to trial to confront the witnesses and evidence presented against him and for the court thereafter to render judgment. A warrantless arrest takes place when a person to be arrested is caught committing, about to commit, or has just committed a crime. Regardless of the type of arrest, the person arrested will have to be brought to the nearest police station. In all cases, the taking of custody should not be subject to a greater restraint than which is necessary for the suspect detention. The officer may break into any building or enclosure where the person to be arrested is or is reasonable believed to be if he is or he is refused admittance and he may also break out when necessary to liberate himself. Warrantless arrest proceeds in different legal direction before it goes to court. A peace officer or a private person may without warrant arrest a person with the following requisites. When in his presence, the person to be arrested has committed, is actually committing or is attempting to commit an offense. When an offense has just committed or just been committed and he has probable cause to believe based on personal knowledge of facts or circumstances that the person to be arrested has committed it. And when the person to be arrested is a prisoner who has escaped from a penal establishment or place where he is serving final judgment or is temporarily confined while his case is pending or has escaped while being transferred from one confinement to another. Inside the police station, a suspect arrested while committing, about to commit, or has just committed an offense will be booked. The sworn statements of the law enforcement officers or citizens who arrested him will be executed and subscribe and evidence seized or obtained from the suspect will be preserved. For warrantless arrest, it is very much necessary to prove its validity or to create probable cause to make it valid. For example, if a person walks along the street and is holding something in his hands, even if he appears to be dubious and has a previous criminal charge for the same offense, 
these are not by themselves sufficient to incite suspicion of criminal activity or to create probable cause enough to justify a warrantless arrest. It must be noted that the detention of the suspect or arrestee may not exceed the periods provided in Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code for the delivery of the detained person to the proper judicial authorities. Specifically, the law requires the public officer or employee who shall detain any person for some legal ground to deliver such person to the proper judicial authorities within the period of 12 hours for crimes or offenses punishable by light penalties or their equivalent, 18 hours for crimes or offenses punishable by correctional penalties or their equivalent, and 36 hours for crimes or offenses punishable by afflictive or capital penalties or their equivalent. The suspect or arrestee will be physically presented by the law enforcement officer to the inquest prosecutor together with the arrest records, documents, and evidence. Only in those cases where the penalty for the offense is at least four years, two months, and one day. So we'll be there to be in quest or will undergo for in quest proceeding. If we say in quest proceeding, it is an informal and summary investigation conducted by a public prosecutor in criminal cases involving persons arrested and detained without the benefit of warrant of arrest. The inquest prosecutor will ascertain whether the suspect may be released for further preliminary investigation in the event there is no probable cause to hold him answerable for the offense at the moment or detain if there is strong evidence against him for the commission of the offense. The second option, if chosen by the inquest prosecutor, will lead to the filing of a complaint or information in court and the application for bail by the suspect or arrestee who continues to be detained, now the accused in a criminal case. Alternatively, the suspect may opt to waive Article 125 if he wants to avail a preliminary investigation under Rule 112 or he can wait until the complaint or information is filed in court and within five days from knowledge of its filing request for a preliminary investigation. A warrant of arrest is a legal process issued by a competent authority directing the arrest of a person or persons upon grounds stated therein. Execution of Warrant of Arrest The head of the office to whom the warrant was delivered must cause it to be executed within 10 days from its receipt, and the officer to whom it is assigned must make a report to the judge who issued the warrant within 10 days from the expiration of the period. If he fails to execute it, he should state the reasons therefore. A warrant of arrest is valid until the arrest is effected or the warrant is lifted. There is no limitation of period. A, take note that a warrant of arrest remains valid until the arrest is effected or the warrant is lifted. Police officers may effect arrest without the warrant in their possession at the time of the arrest. A John Doe warrant is a warrant for the apprehension of a person whose true name is unknown. Generally, this kind of warrant are void because it violates the constitutional provision which requires that warrant of arrest should particularly describe the person or persons to be arrested. But if there is sufficient description to identify the person to be arrested, the warrant is valid. A police officer or a private person may make an arrest without a warrant 
under the following conditions. One, in flagrante delicto or otherwise known as quote in the act. Two, hot pursuit arrest or during the hot pursuit arrest. If we say hot pursuit arrest, it is a doctrine that provides that the police may enter the premises where they suspect a crime has been committed without a warrant when delay would endanger their lives or the lives of others and lead to the escape of the alleged perpetrator. It is also sometimes called as fresh pursuit. And lastly, when the person to be arrested is an escaped prisoner. Rights of a person arrested and responsibilities and authority of a police officer during arrest. So this was uh, based on Republic Act 7438. The arresting officer has the responsibility of informing the arrestee of the reason for the arrest in a language known to him or to her. Take note. So in informing a certain person to be arrested, okay, you need to explain in a common dialect okay, the uh, reason of the arrest. The arrestee may require the arresting officer to show the warrant of arrest. So if you are being arrested, okay, you have the uh, right to require the arresting officer to see the content of the warrant of arrest. The arresting officer should inform the arrestee of their constitutional rights, particularly okay, the right to remain silent, that any statement they may say okay, could be used against them in any court of law, that uh, they have the right to have their own counsel of their own choice, and if they cannot afford it, okay, the, to hire a, a particular lawyer, then one shall be provided to assist them, particularly from the uh, public attorney's office, and that the arresting officer must assure that the arrestee understand his or her rights. The arrestee should have the right to communicate with the lawyer or their immediate uh, family member. It is the responsibility of the arresting officer to see to it that these are accomplished. If arrest was made without a warrant, the arrestee will be immediately brought to the proper police station and kept there for not more than 12 hours for crimes or offenses punishable by light penalties, 18 hours for crimes or offenses punishable by correctional penalties, and 36 hours for crimes or offenses punishable by capital penalties. This was mentioned in the previous uh, slides or lecture. The arrestee shall not be subjected to torture, force, violence, threat, intimidation, or any other means which betray the free will. They should not be brought to secret detention places, solitary confinement, incommunicado, or not allowed to communicate with other people, or other forms of detention. If arrested without a warrant and the arrestee waive his right under the provisions of Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code, the arresting officer shall ensure that the arrestee will sign the waiver of detention in the presence of the counsel of his own choice. If right against self-incrimination was waived and opt to give a statement, the arresting officer shall ensure that the waiver be made in writing and signed by the arrestee in the presence of a counsel of his own choice or a competent and independent counsel provided by the government. Immediately after arrest, the arrestee should be subjected to a physical examination by a medical officer or in the absence of such medical officer by any government physician in the area 
prior to the release or any chains of custody the arrestee shall be physically examined responsibilities and authority of the arresting officer right of officer to break into building or enclosure an officer in order to make an arrest either by virtue of a warrant or without a warrant may break into building or enclosure where the person to be arrested is or is reasonably believed to be if he is refused admittance thereto after announcing his authority and purpose take note that this particular uh, rule is only applicable once that the arresting officer will inform the occupants of the private property of his authority and purpose of breaking into the building or enclosure. So he must uh, properly explain to the occupants why he needs to break into the building or enclosure. Then if they will not allow him to enter, okay, that's the time that he can or he may be allowed to break into a building or enclosure right to break out from building or enclosure whenever an officer has entered the building or enclosure to make an arrest he may break out from there in order to liberate himself uh, just in case uh, the situation is no longer uh, safe on the part of the police officer so the police officer who entered in the private premises or the property or a building or a house is allowed to break out okay or to uh, for example he will break the door just to uh, save his life next arrest after escape or rescue if a person lawfully arrested escapes or is rescued by his cohorts take not cohorts if you say cohorts uh, a co-member of a gang or a band uh, let's say the, the escape uh, arrested person is a member of a gang so if he will be rescued by his co-members okay uh, this is the rule any person may immediately pursue to retake him without a warrant at any time and in any place within the Philippines, take note, huh? any person, any person. So this uh, applies a uh, citizen's arrest. Okay, so it it is not uh, required that the person who will arrest this uh, escape arrested person, okay, is a police officer. This applies the citizen's arrest procedures on arrest. The arresting officer should verify the validity of the warrant and request for an authenticated copy from the issuing court. In serving the warrant, the police officer should introduce himself and show proper identification or ID. Make a manifestation of authority against the person to be arrested. If refuse entry, the police officer may break into any residence, office, building, and other structure where the person to be arrested is in or is reasonably believed to be in after announcing his purpose, as I made mention in the previous slide. The police officer need not to have a copy of the warrant in his possession at the time of the arrest. If the person arrested so requires, the warrant shall be shown to the arrested person as soon as possible. So it can be shown in the police station where the uh, arrested person will be detained. So it should be shown immediately upon arrival in the police station. Number six, secure the person to be arrested and use handcuffs for the protection of the arresting officer other individuals or the arrested person himself number seven inform the person to be arrested of his rights under the law uh, for example his uh, Miranda rights the right to remain silent 
the right to have his own counsel or the counsel of his own choice. If he cannot provide, the government will provide for him the right to know the accusation against him. No unnecessary force shall be used in making an arrest. Number nine, confiscated evidence shall be properly documented with the chain of custody of evidence duly and clearly established. The chain of custody of evidence requires that from the moment the evidence is collected, every transfer of evidence from person to person be documented and that it be uh, probable that nobody else could have access that evidence. Number 10, bring the arrested person to the police station for documentation. Number 11, make a return of warrant to the court of origin. And number 12, deliver the arrested person to jail or prison upon the issuance of a commitment order of the court. If it's a commitment order, it is a written order of the court or any agency authorized by law to issue and trusting an inmate to a jail for the purpose of safekeeping during dependency of his or her case. Effecting warrantless arrests. 1. Freeze or restrain the suspects. Make a proper introduction as to identity and authority to arrest. Inform the arrest or arrested person of the circumstances of his arrest and recite the Miranda warning and anti-torture warning to him. Secure the person to be arrested and use handcuffs for the protection of arresting officer or other individuals or the arrested person himself. Conduct to research for weapons and other illegal materials on the person arrested and surroundings within his immediate control. Confiscated evidence shall be properly documented with the chain of custody of evidence duly and clearly established. No unnecessary force shall be used in making an arrest and bring the arrested person to the police station for further investigation and disposition. If we say disposition, we are referring to the current status or final outcome of an arrest or the prosecution. Physical examination of arrested person or suspect. Before interrogation, the person arrested shall have the right to be informed of his right to demand physical examination by an independent and competent doctor of his own choice. If he cannot afford the services of a doctor of his own choice, he shall be provided by the state with a competent and independent doctor to conduct physical examination. If the person arrested is female, she shall be attended to preferably by a female doctor. After arrest, a suspect is taken into police custody and booked or processed. During booking, the following procedures shall be performed by designated police officers. 1. Record the arrest made in the police blotter. Always include the facts that are necessary to show that the specific crime or incident has taken place. The report should include the common name of the crime, the statutory reference number, and the required elements necessary for the crime to be complete. Second, conduct pat down or strip search of the suspect. This is employed by the police, which is typically used for the purpose of finding drugs or other contraband like weapons. Submit the suspect for medical examination. Fourth, take the criminal suspect's personal information like the name, date of birth, physical characteristics, and the like. Number five, record information about the suspect's alert uh, crime. Number six, perform a record search or recorded search of the suspect's 
criminal background. Number seven, fingerprint and photograph the subject. Number eight, take custody of any personal property carried by the suspect like keys, purse, uh, money, and other personal belongings to be returned upon the suspect's release and place the suspect in a police station, lock up or holding cell or local jail. Functions, procedures, and responsibilities of the arresting officer during the booking of arrested suspects. Upon arrest, the arresting officer shall immediately bring the suspect to the police station and present the suspect to the uh, desk officer. The arresting officer shall ask the desk officer to record in the police blotter the circumstances of the arrest as well as the identity of the suspects and name of arresting officers. So this will be the basis of assigning a blotter number to the arrest of the suspects signifies that the police station has officially taken cognizance of the arrest. The arresting officer shall sign in the blotter entry. The arresting officer and the desk officer shall thereafter conduct a more thorough pat down search of the suspects. As I made mention a while ago, okay, pat down search is used to see if there is any deadly weapon or contraband uh, found and confiscated okay, and to the uh, suspect and it shall be uh, recorded in the blotter. When women or children are among those arrested, the desk officer shall task the duty of the uh, WCPD officer to conduct the pat-down. A strip search may be conducted as the situation demands, but only with the authority of the chief of police. Take note, there must be a, an authority coming from the chief of police or the officer on duty. A strip search, if conducted, should be indicated in the blotter. After the pat-down uh, search, the arresting officer shall request the uh, this officer to prepare the PNP booking, okay, particularly to request for medical examination of the suspect. The arresting officer shall receive the accomplished medical examination request form and then shall be responsible for bringing or escorting the suspect to the uh, government hospital referred to in the request for examination of the suspect. The arresting officer shall receive the medical examination results from the government physician and then he shall bring back the suspect to the police station and turn over the suspect and the result of the medical examination to the duty investigator. The arresting officer will obtain the PNP booking form 2 or the arrest and booking sheet and refer it to the duty investigator so that both of them will accomplish the form, diligently providing all the information required in the form. Copy or the copy of the arrest and booking form shall form part of the case folder and kept at the investigation section at the police station. Functions, procedures, and responsibilities of the desk officers or the desk officer during the booking of arrested person. Upon presentation by the arresting officer of the arrested suspect to the desk officer, the desk officer shall log and record the details of the arrest made and assign a blotter entry number to the arrest. The entry shall include the name of the arresting officer and the information as to the identity of the suspects and it shall contain the five W's and one H of an information as well as the name of the government hospital where the suspects will be referred for medical examination. 
after recording in the blotter, the desk officer together with the arresting officer shall conduct a redundancy pat-down search of the suspects. This procedure is necessary to ensure that the suspect do not carry any deadly weapons or contraband when they are referred to a government hospital for medical examination. Any weapons or contraband or any other items confiscated or taken into custody during the pat-down search shall likewise be recorded in the blotter. If the suspect is a woman or a child, the desk officer shall call for the uh, Duty Women and Children Protection Desk or the WCPD officer who shall conduct the search and okay, the desk officer shall then prepare or accomplish the PNP booking form to request for medical examination of the arrested suspect. The desk officer shall have the police station officer on duty to sign the request form but in the absence of the officer on duty okay the desk officer may sign the request form himself functions procedures and responsibilities of the duty investigator during the booking of arrests or arrested persons after medical examination the arresting officer shall refer the suspect and the case to the duty investigator. The duty investigator and the arresting officer shall accomplish the PNP booking form 2 or the arresting and booking form and ensure that a copy of the results of the medical examination are attached to the booking form. The duty investigator shall obtain personal information from each suspect and accomplish the uh, booking form 2 arrest and booking form with the help of the arresting officer. The booking form 2 or the booking sheet should contain among others the personal circumstances of the suspects. Likewise, the initial determination of the nature of the offense is included in the booking sheet. The last part of the booking sheet refers to the medical history or information known of the suspect. This part should not be confused with the medical certification issued by a doctor upon his arrest which shall be attached to the PNP booking form 2A or the medical examination result sheet. The duty investigator shall ensure that mugshots or the photographic portrait of the suspects are taken into four different methods in accordance with the procedures. The four R mugshots shall be attached to or printed in the booking form to be or the mugshots of suspects. The duty investigator shall prepare a turnover receipt form okay, from investigator to the jailer, known to be the booking form 3. Okay. The jailer of the station will now take responsibility of the suspect. If it is necessary that the arrested persons be placed in the lockup cell, a complete body frisking of the suspect by pat-down type search for any concealed weapon must be done. A strip search shall be conducted if necessary. On body search of arrested male suspect, it is typically not required to same-sex pat-down searches, but it is wise. When it comes to women and children, the WCPD officer who is familiar with women and children uh, protection duties will conduct the search. And search is done to ensure that no prohibited object will be brought inside the lockup cell, particularly sharp objects that can be used to hurt other prisoners and groups that might be used for entangling. All personal valuables of the suspect that are not allowed to be brought inside the lockup cell 
will be collected by the investigator and shall be turned over to the police station property custodian. The investigator shall prepare the PNP booking form for or this is what we call suspects personal property receipt form. The duty investigator shall also be responsible for ensuring that the suspect's fingerprint or 10 prints are taken by the fingerprint technician using both the 10 print card or the uh, PNP uh, BF2 only a trained fingerprint technician shall be allowed by the duty investigator to take the 10 prints of the suspect using the standard PNP crime laboratory form number 452-038 to ensure that this will be readable by the automated fingerprint identification system or the APIS. The 10 print card is considered as an integral part of the booking form and is known as the PNP booking form 2C or the 10 print card. The duty investigator must always inform the desk officer of the status of the case and the suspect so that updates will be entered in the police blotter. The investigator shall be responsible for preparing the necessary documents such as the affidavit of complaint, affidavit of witness, booking and arrest report, photocopy of the recovered evidence if any, and a letter of the case referral to the prosecutor's office that should be signed by the station commander or the police station officer or duty with the former's unavailability. Let us review the flowchart of the booking of arrested suspects. So assuming that the suspect is already arrested, the arresting officer will now bring the suspect to the police station or the nearest police station. The desk officer will now enter into the blotter, the arrest, and prepare the request letter for medical examination of the suspect or the suspects. The arresting officer uh, bring suspect to the government hospital for medical examination. The arresting officer brings back suspect to the station and accomplish arrest and booking forms. The arresting officer will now refer the suspects to the duty investigator and the duty investigator will uh, assist in the preparation of booking forms and takes the 10 prints and the mugshot with the assistant of the uh, technician. The duty investigator turns over the suspects to the uh, duty jailer. The duty jailer takes custody of the suspects and places them in the lockup cell or in jail. Thank you for watching. I hope so you learned something. And if you have questions, you may uh, post your questions in our FB page.